Welcome to our service tonight. Thank you so much for coming this evening. We're going to all stand together. Page 250, He Keeps Me Singing. There's within my heart a melody. Let's all sing together tonight, first and last verses. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still. In all of my ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. On the last, soon he's coming back to welcome me. Far beyond the starry sky, I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Let's remain standing. I want us to get that last verse one more time. I only got to sing a chorus of that. It's my fault. I was busy talking, but uh, I want to get in on that last verse one more time and uh, let's sing it out like we're at church we are aren't we right. now i'm glad to be here tonight let's sing it out from our hearts to the lord like we talked about last wednesday night give it all you've got tonight all right soon he's coming back to welcome me soon he's coming back to welcome me far beyond the starry sky i shall wing my flight to worlds unknown I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Now you can be seated. Thank you so much for being here. Temple Baptist Church tonight for our midweek service. And it's so good to see our church family tonight. And uh, raise your hand if you've already turned the air conditioner on at your house today. All right, I turned mine on. I think it was March, probably. I can't stand to be hot, and uh, most of you know that. And uh, but uh, I, I, I thank the Lord for air conditioning. I saw something on social media, and I think it was the the man who invented the air condition. What was his name? Mr. Curry. How do you say it? Carrier, was it? I don't know. But anyway, it was an old picture of this man who uh, had evidently, it was, looked like it was legitimate, had invented the air condition. And, uh, and uh, under, the, under the picture, it said, this is the man who invented the air condition. Let's all pause for a moment and give thanks, you know, and uh, because I'm thankful for air condition, amen, and uh, thankful for that. But we're looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful church service, and, uh, and I, I'm so good to see these families join our church Sunday night back, and good to see the Taylor family complete now, and uh, they're back with us on vacation. We still got, uh, we've got families that are back on vacation, still got a family or two. Uh, I think on vacation. I know some of my family's on vacation still, and it was so good to see everyone tonight. We want to go to Lord in prayer to begin our service. We'll get our prayer requests at the end as we normally do, uh, but uh, do remember to pray as we go to the Lord in prayer together as a church family for the service tonight, that God would speak to your heart, and uh, I always pray uh, in the office before I come to the auditorium. Lord, please, and of course through the week as well, but Lord, please speak to my heart and speak, please speak to our hearts uh, that the Lord would help me, whether it's challenging me or comforting me or convicting me, whatever it may be. I want to be ready for it and we're receptive to uh, whatever God has for me tonight. And uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless together as a church family. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you so much for the opportunity to meet back together. And we thank you so much for our church family. What a blessing, Father, that they are. And to me personally, and I know to my wife, and just a blessing to one to another. And Father, we're so blessed to be able to meet back together. And Father, I ask that you continue to bless us and help us together as we, as we meet, uh, Father, back in in-person services, Father, that you would continually speak to our hearts, Father, through singing and preaching, that you'd be honored and glorified. Uh, Father, there's transitioning that's, that we're having to do right now. 
And Father, I ask that you be honored and glorified through it all, that we would have grace and patience and strength and understanding through it all, and that you would be blessed and honored uh, through it all, that souls would be continue to be saved, that folks would still be added to the church. And we thank you again for all that you've done in these areas. Continue to bless, and we'll thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can uh, remain seated, but uh, get, your, get your tongue out and your heart ready and uh, sing out this next song. Brother Holly Lee. Christ is all I need. Christ is all I need. Let's sing that together tonight. Christ is all I need. Christ is all I need. All, all I need. Christ is all I need. Christ is all. Crucified, he was crucified for me. He died on Calvary. That is why I know that he loves me so. Christ is all I need. 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 All, all I need. Christ is all I need. Christ is all I need. All, all I need. I think there's a song that says when you find that Christ or when you get to the point that you find Christ is all you have you'll find that he is all you need and sometimes I believe the Lord allows his people that wander perhaps away from him uh, that he takes things away from them and then that's all they have they don't have their money to lean on them they may not have family to lean upon they may not have uh, the, the, su substances or whatever to lean on. God takes everything away from them and then they find that Christ is all they have and then they begin growing in that and figuring out he's all I need. And there's a great truth to that. There's the whole message in that. Christ is all you need. Amen? And I like that song. And we have several announcements, so I'll, I'm going to go through these uh, as thorough as possible. Uh, it seems like I always miss some <laughs> ins and outs of them, but I'll get these announcements uh, as good as I can. So listen carefully. You've got a lot of things to cover tonight. Um, there's a total of $4,205 that has been provided for the air purifiers. Isn't that a blessing? And uh, so I thank you, church, so much. Those who are listening tonight, those who are watching, and, of course, those of you who are here, thank you so much for your giving. And that was a cumulative gift from so many different areas. And so I appreciate that very much. So with that being said, uh, and also I will say this as well, uh, we are now, we found out uh, this, this week earlier that we were going to be able to get those uh, cheaper than we thought we were. And so that allows us to be able to get more of those air purifiers. So all the money will go to those. And so that allows us to be able to get really about seven uh, air purifiers. So this, that'll take care of three for this whole building right here that we're in. Uh, this building has three air conditioning units, two that are fielding this room we're in, our sanctuary, one that feeds the restrooms and our uh, offices back here. So that'll take care of this building in its entirety. Uh, it, the other three will take care of the fellowship building in its entirety. There's two that feed the main area, the gym area of our fellowship building, and one that fills the uh, restrooms, uh, kitchen area, vestibule, etc. cetera. Um, that will take care of that whole building. And then the other one, we'll go ahead and just put it in the Genesis building. So all we'll lack to have the whole property finished is the Sunday school building. There's three for that building. And so that's all we'll lack. And so I'm very, very thankful for that. And I want to thank you so much for that. And hopefully, well, I'll let you know as soon as we get those in. And uh, hopefully we'll get those in soon, all right? We just, there's a back order on them. Uh, they've ordered tons and tons of them. Everybody's trying to get them. And so they're, they're, nobody has them, so they're waiting on a back order. And so uh, we'll let you know as soon as we can get those in, all right? And... Um, also, work day this Saturday, 9 o'clock. Announced that Sunday, 
and that is still on, and we're looking forward to that again Saturday at 9 o'clock. Uh, I'll say more about that in just a second, all right? Uh, services on Sunday. Uh, here's the big announcement. Are you ready? Uh, Sunday, uh, we'll begin our in-person services. Uh, we're, we're, we're done with our drive-ins, and the reason why I met with our deacons, and I've really spent a lot of time in prayer about this and, and, and thought of thinking about it, and uh, my wife finally told me what to do, and, uh, and I, I'm joking, I'm joking, of course, and, uh, but uh, it's just so hot. It's just uh, nobody really wants to sit in their vehicles uh, when it's going to be in the 80s, and it's just hard. And uh, so uh, we looked at it. We've got a great attendance on Sunday nights. Uh, it's about full in here. And so we, we had a couple options. We, we could do two services on Sunday morning, but in reality, we would then have to start doing two services on Sunday night as well, and that's just way, way too much because about two more families, if, when everybody gets here and as they start coming back in the next month or two, we're not going to have any more room on Sunday night seating six feet apart. And so we, we had to consider that. So really the, the two services were out of the question as well. So we really kind of uh, have to use the fellowship building. And so um, I'm excited. It's kind of a new venture, you know. I'm excited about it. It's going to work great, and we'll look forward to it. So we're going through this as a church family together, and uh, I've talked to our deacons and so forth. And, and um, so we're excited about that. Sunday morning, we'll be at the, in the fellowship building, 11 o'clock. And I'll do another column all about that later on this week, and so please keep that in mind. Now, we'll also be using the fellowship building for all of our services, so Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, because there's a lot... You would think, well, Pastor, all we got to do is set up a couple chairs. Well, there's a lot involved in this. Uh, we don't have, we're not using songbooks. We got, we're going to move our monitors out there. We have to set up the PA system out there. We've had the PA system outside. Uh, we've got to build, we got a, a, a manufactured platform just a little bit here uh, to get it going. Uh, we're going to try to make it as much like a church as possible. We'll have our flags out there. And so there's a lot that we're going to be putting out there. Uh, our, can our video equipment, we're going to see a live stream out there. So it's going to be a lot involved in, in, in transitioning out there. So, and I don't know, we're going to be out there as long as we do the six foot. You say, Pastor, when are we going to get back? Well, when they say you don't have to do the six foot anymore. So we're just going to have to play it week by week, ear, uh, play it by ear, week by week. And uh, so uh, we'll be using it for all of our services because it's just too complicated switching back and forth, okay? And, um, and we won't have to have this taped off. You'll see how we're going to set it up. We're going to set uh, it's a little bit too complicated to explain, but you will have one chair for a single person, then we're six foot over, we'll have two chairs for a couple, then we're six foot over, we'll have uh, three chairs for this couple, uh, and then six foot over, we'll have four chairs for a fan, this family, et cetera. So you'll have a lot of different areas to, to choose from, and it's going to work out great. Now, uh, we will have the metal chairs, and, uh, and then we also, on the, on the side, we'll have uh, about 40 uh, cushion chairs back in our Sunday school building. We'll have several of those out there uh, that are really nice, comfortable for those of you that will need a cushion seat. And if you don't need a cushion seat, please be mindful of those who would need that. And so um, please uh, help us with that. But if you need one, when you come in, we'll probably have David Wall helping us to do that. So what you'll need to do is you'll just need to see David Wall and just tell him, David, can I get a cushion seat? And he'll switch that out for your metal chair, okay? And so keep that in mind, and we'll take care of you with that, all right? Then we'll still be doing the kids' kits. Um, we're, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm going to try to research, see if we can do our children's church and our, our Wednesday night kids program and when we can get all that going again. And uh, so we're going we're gonna, to uh, look at that. But we will be giving out the kids' kits uh, during Sunday morning service. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no drive through lunch, all right? Now, I hate to say goodbye to that, but uh, we're not saying goodbye to Steve and Laura, all right? So they're still here. Matter of fact, we're, we're, in the, we're talking about the possibility of, of doing something on the 28th for our anniversary Sunday. So we'll see about doing that, okay? But we're still having oatmeal cookies, all right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I give you the bad news, but give you the good news, all right? So we'll end on the good news. So we're still having oatmeal cookie donation to the Lace Missionary Prayer Fellowship, and so keep that in mind, if you will, please, all right? And then our Sunday night service, of course, will be in service as well, 6.30 in the Fellowship Building, and I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a positive thing about going to the Fellowship Building, it, it, you know, it does, it, it has a little bit more of acoustic in there, you know, it, it um, 
it's a little bit louder in there, so I'm excited about hearing you sing out there. I'm excited about that. You know, you see, Pastor, uh, you know, I'm trying to make it a little on the bright side, but I'm excited about it. I really am, all right? So now, I, this is the, one of the last things I'm going to mention. Um, back to Saturday, our work day. With that, all that being said, we got a lot of stuff that needs to go out the fellowship building, out to the fellowship building, and there's a lot of things that need to go out of the fellowship building. So there's a lot of stuff over there that we just need to throw away, and uh, there's stuff that needs to be organized, and uh, so we need help with that. Uh, also, there's the tree in the back here that we need some help dragging it off. Uh, Greg Weatherman, I think, will be here trimming the shrubbery. He might need some help with that. And so uh, we have some uh, blue mulch that needs to go out on the playground. We have five or six bags or so of that needs to go out there. We've got a lot of stuff that needs to be done. Our, our, Miss Beverly is going to be using our electric piano for the organ out there. So uh, it's going to be, um, it needs to be taken out there. Uh, and matter of fact, if we can get a couple guys tonight after the service, uh, we need these two speakers. Is that right, Brother Holly? We need these two speakers to the fellowship building. We need these two greeneries to the fellowship building. We need the flags to the fellowship building. And again, we're going to try to make it as much like church as possible, our auditorium as possible. And so um, uh, if you could help with that, it won't take but about 10 minutes. Just one person grabs one each. And uh, so uh, keep that in mind. But Saturday morning, if you can, uh, 9 o'clock, meet us in the parking lot. All right? So keep all that in mind. Brother Holly, let's have one more song. Let's all stand together tonight. And uh, that's enough announcement. Let's get some spirituality in this service here. Sing it out tonight. All right. So since we're waving at each other during fellowship time, I thought this Hold the Fort song would be a good one to warm up on. So on the chorus, remember, we're going to wave the answer back to heaven. Don't forget when we get to that, okay? Hold the fort first and last verses together. Let's sing. Oh, my comrades, see the signal waving in the sky. Reinforcements now appearing, victory is nigh. Hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signal still. You ready? Wave the answer back to heaven by thy grace we will turn around and wave at everybody tonight teenagers are going to be dismissed at this time Last verse together tonight, fierce and long the battle rages. Let's sing. Fierce and long the battle rages, but our help is near. Onward comes our great commander. Cheer, my comrades, cheer. Hold the fort, for I am coming. Jesus, signal steel. Wave the answer back to heaven by thy grace we will. Amen. All right, you can be seated tonight. Thank you so much. I can't, uh, I know most of these songs, I don't know the words of that song. We're going to have to get a monitor back there if we keep on doing this. And uh, somebody's taking my songbook. If you find who did that, you let me know. I'm just kidding. I probably put it somewhere. And. Uh, but anyway, take your Bibles tonight, turn with me to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number 5 tonight. Thank you again so much for being here tonight, and um, I'm, th I'm excited, looking forward to things getting back to normal. You say, Pastor, don't you understand that things will never be normal? Well, I'm hoping for the best. 
and uh, I believe it will be. I, honestly, that's kind of my gut feeling, and everybody has their opinion. That's mine, and uh, you're entitled to yours, of course, but I'm hoping, and it may not be normal, and, and it, it may not ever be normal, but, um, but uh, I'm hoping that it will be because I miss uh, the, that normal, normality of life, if I'm saying that correctly. Ephesians chapter number 5. In your Bibles, and uh, we're going to continue with this uh, verse by verse study. We'll hopefully be concluding chapter number five tonight, and trust that this will be a blessing and help and encouragement to you, especially if you're a couple. If you're not married, then it will be helpful to you as well. I've never known a scripture, a verse, or a word, or a jot, or a tittle that did not help us. Amen. And uh, in the Word of God, the Bible, Jesus said, every Every jot and tittle, every comma, little period, everything is there for a purpose. And I believe that. I believe God has preserved His Word down through the ages of time. And if He's preserved it, then the Word of God has to be somewhere. And I believe we're holding it in our laps tonight. Amen? And so uh, it is the Word of God. The devil will cause you to doubt that and uh, if you're not careful. But it is the Word of God. So Ephesians chapter number 5. And uh, I've been keeping up with what's going on in the, in the world today. Of course, I know you are as well, and the rioting and looting and everything. And, and uh, you say, Pastor, what is our response as a church for that? Uh, continue. continue. Amen? Just to continue. You know, the Bible teaches us uh, that uh, in, I believe it's 2 Timothy, uh, Paul warns Timothy, this young preacher, and he says, uh, perilous times in the, latter time, in the latter days, perilous times were going to come. And we're there. Uh, Men should be lovers of themselves. And it goes on to describe all these different characteristics of the latter times, the last days before Jesus Christ comes back. Uh, the rapture, the rapture of the church before the tribulation period, and then the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Uh, and the Bible goes on to say in that same chapter that things will wax worse and worse. Can I, can I encourage you with something tonight? It's not going to get better. That's great encouragement, isn't it? It's not going to get better until Jesus Christ uh, comes, back, come, comes back and gets us. And uh, then it's, in, in reality, it's going to get better for us, but it's going to, going to get worse for the world without Christ because they're going to go through the wrath of God, the tribulation, seven years of tribulation. And I'm thankful I'm not going to be here, amen? And, uh, and, uh, uh, but it's, it's just going to get worse. And you know what? And after that, after Paul said, tells Timothy, Perilous, know this, that in the latter days perilous times shall come. And he goes through all of these lists of how it's going to be perilous, how it's going to be bad, how it's going to wax worse and worse. And you know what he says after that? But continue. Timothy, you just keep on doing what you're supposed to be doing. And here, you know, do you know the truth of the matter is? Uh, you and I are not going to change somebody's mindset uh, and, and go out there and tell them, uh, uh, hey, listen, friend, what you're doing is wrong. You just stop this. And they're probably not going to listen to you because that they've made up their mind so strongly that they're going against law uh, and, and what was right and wrong, and they're going against that. And so they've made up their mind of what is right in their own eyes, and you're not going to change them. Government can uh, and hopefully will enforce the law and do right. And... Um, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> you say, oh, pastor, was, was that, you know, wrong what happened, what caused all this? Well, of course, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, and I'm not getting, going to get political, but yeah, of course. But is it, is it right to, to go steal, uh, you know, Roy's, Roy, Rolls Royce? I can't even say that kind of car. And uh, is it wrong to go steal cars uh, because of that? You know, absolutely not. And, uh, and so, uh, so pastor, what is, what, pastor, what can we do to change all this? Well, number one, you're not going to change somebody's opinion about what they think they're doing because they think they're doing right. Uh, it, you and I going to talk to them. I'm going somewhere with this, so hang on. You and I going to talk to them and saying, look, what you're doing is wrong is the same thing as them coming to you and saying what you're doing is wrong. You understand that because this is their mindset. But here's the, here's, here's the deal breaker. You and I cannot change them. But God can. God can. God can. And so this is how you and I can be instrumental. I cannot change them with my ideas and, and, uh, and, and my philosophies and so forth. I cannot change them. You and I cannot change them at all. But God can. 
And so you say, well, Pastor, how can, how can this happen? How does this go forth? Well, let me ask you a question. Does the Word of God teach us right and wrong? Let me ask you a question. Does the Word of God teach us to love everybody regardless of their uh, ethnic background or whatever it is? Uh, does the Bible teach us to love one another? Does the Bible teach us to treat people equally? Does the Word of God teach us to love others? Does the Bi Word of God teach us character, responsibility, and all those things? Would you agree that those people that are doing these awful acts need the character and love and, 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 and discernment and reason? And, and they need compassion, yes. And do they need somebody to help them and guide them and, and help them and, 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 and listen to them? Yeah, they need these things. And see, the Word of God is going to provide that, you see. And the only thing that's going to change their life and their mentality and their actions is God and His Word, not you and I. So that is why it is so, that is why it is so important to me to, on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays to go out into our community in about a 20-minute radius of our church and to knock on every door in our neighborhood and, and, and give them the Word of God, the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ, because you understand they're not going to apply and adhere to the Word of God if they don't have Jesus Christ in their heart, you see. So that's the first thing that has to happen is salvation. So we're giving the Word of God and the plan of salvation to them, hoping and trusting and praying that they'll trust Christ as their personal Savior, in turn have a desire for the Word of God that will teach them Amen. what they should and should not be doing. So that's our response. Just continue to do what we know to do. The, the, the answer is simple. The gospel is what changes lives. God is what changes lives. It is not you and I. And so that's why it's so important to get the Word of God in in people's lives, and that's and that's and that's what that's the whole purpose that, behind this. So let's just keep on going. Let's pray for them, and let's try to be a witness, a light for a light uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ during this time. And you say, Pastor, are you scared? No, my wife will protect me. And uh, I'm just joking tonight. But the, the truth of the matter is, I'm not scared. You know, the Lord just you know gives me peace about the, I don't know, and I'm not bright. I'm just saying, the Lord's good to me, and. You know, God's going to take care of this. God's in control. And, you know, it's got to get worse and worse somehow because God said it was going to do. So maybe we should just let God do what he's doing and just continue doing what we know to do. Let God do the changing business. Amen? Let God take his word and change people's lives. But he gets the word of God out to people through you and I. And, uh, and so let's understand that you and I cannot change people. Okay, you and I, it's not up to me. The pressure is not on me to change somebody's life. Uh, it's God that does that. All I'm supposed to do is throw out the seed, amen? And that helps me too because I don't have to stress about, well, I've got to change the world. Well, I'm not the one, God didn't tell me to change the world. God just told me to throw out the seed and he would do the work, amen? amen. And so let's just continue. Paul, Paul says, Timothy, uh, perilous times should come. But you just keep on doing what you know to do. You just keep on preaching the Word of God. You just keep on being faithful to the Lord. God is in control. And, uh, and He's going to allow everything to pan out for our good and for His glory. Amen? And uh, so now, uh, no, message number two. Ephesians chapter number five. I feel like I just killed the whole mess, the whole service tonight. I hope not. I love you. And, uh, but, uh, but I'm not going to let things you know, drive me nuts. I'm going to love my family. I'm going to love my church family. And I'm going to enjoy life, you know. I'm going to keep eating a Dario and, you know, and keep enjoying life. Ephesians chapter number 5 tonight. Ephesians chapter number 5. You're probably already there. See, Pastor, I was here 20 minutes ago. Look in verse number 21. We've been talking about what we are to be mindful of as followers of Christ. What we're to be mindful of as followers of Christ. And this section, number six, has went all the way from chapter number four, verse number one, all the way through chapter number six, verse number nine. We said we are to be mindful of our walk. And then we said we are to be mindful of unity. And then we said we are to be mindful of our gifts. And then we said we are to be mindful of our new life. And then we are to be mindful of our position. And we've talked about several things about our position. We talked about our position as a child of God. And I'm glad that I, at, at, at six years old, 
When I trusted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I became a child of God. Therefore, I have a reputation. I have a responsibility as a child to my father. And then we talked about our position as a Christian last Wednesday night in verse 18, 19, and 20. Now, tonight, we're going to be talking about our position as a couple. Now, if you're not married, um, then, uh, uh, then uh, just uh, you, you, it'll be helpful to you as well, I'm sure. Okay, But let's begin reading verse number 21 tonight. Submitting yourselves one to another... In the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. If I didn't kill it a while ago, I'm going to, we're killing it right now. Killing service. <laughs> For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Verse 24, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Uh, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, uh, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence. Her husband. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your word. And I ask you for just a few minutes that you would use me to be a blessing to your people tonight. And we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. So our position as a couple. And I want to notice a couple real quick things uh, that we are to do here in these verses as a couple, all right? Uh, or as a husband and wife. No, letter A under this position as a couple. As a couple, we are to submit to one another. Look back in verse number 21, and this is really the springboard for this whole section. God has order to everything. And if you look at creation, you'll find order in creation, an order for the house home, order for the church, and order for every aspect of life. God does everything, as the Bible says, decently and in order. Verse number 21, it says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, I believe personally that this ties in to uh, back in verse number 19 even, where it says, speaking to yourselves. Uh, evidently, obviously, uh, talking about the whole church family. And we're to submit ourselves one to another. So, although we have this grouped under this section of uh, being a couple, uh, this spreads more than that. We are to submit to one another in general, all right? Submit. Uh, you know what basically that word means? Uh, it, here, uh, obviously, and we'll get to the wife in just a minute, and we'll go through that really quickly, and I'm just joking. Submit. You know what this means? It basically means to get along with one another. Submit yourselves, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Um. This will help your marriage like nothing else. This will help your relationship with your family like nothing else. This will help your relationship with anybody in the church or anybody in general. Submitting yourselves. Did you know this? You don't always have to be right. And there's some people that feel like I have to be right because I am right. You know, I've never been wrong before. Why should I be wrong now? And there's no, there's there is not there is no submissive attitude, and what I mean by that doesn't mean that you're bowing down to the other person and saying, "Oh my, you're right," and "Oh my, I was wrong," and so forth. It means to get along with one another. It means to you know, if you've got an opinion about something and this person has an opinion about something, don't bar, don't get all over them and drive them down to the ground because their opinion is not like yours. Submit yourselves one to another. And get along with one another. Allow someone, you know, there's a lot of times in our church uh, as a pastor uh, that I have to submit to, to one another. You say, well, pastor, you're the pastor. You're in charge. Well, you know, th that's not the reality. Uh, I know nothing about what Mike Moser is doing right now. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Before church came, 
before church started tonight, I went up there and I turned these on. I'm good at that. I can turn those on. And uh, I turned those on, went upstairs, and I thought, I'm going to get this thing ready. Mike might be late tonight, might be running behind tonight. He might not get here to Ten Teal. I want to make sure I get this thing going. You know, I messed it up. Here comes Mike walking up the stairs and said, Mike, I'm sorry, man. I, I messed it up. I'm stuck. I don't know how to fix it. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. And, uh, and uh, he's like, no problem. I'll fix that faster. I, 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 so I have to see, I have to submit to Mike's ideas about this media. Tonight we're going to meet after church, after night in the fellowship hall, look at the wiring that we need to do and perhaps even have to purchase some wiring uh, for the moving this stuff and so forth. And, 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 uh, and I have to submit to uh, Brother Holly with the, with, the, uh, with the music. He knows more about the music. Now, as a pastor, I'll say, Brother Holly, I think we should do this, and I think this might be a good decision and so forth. But there's some things that Pat, Brother Holly knows more about music than I do, and there's some things that he says, well, this will work and this won't work, and I have to be submissive to that attitude. You see what I'm saying? We have to get along, and I, it can't be all about Pastor Bowles, and it can't be all about, well, I'm the dad, and this is how it's going to be. I have to submit with my wife and understand, you know, there's a lot of things and most of everything. I'll always, if I have a decision to make, I'll always ask my wife what she thinks about the decision because in most cases, she, she thinks of these things that I never think about. And we think totally different. And it works like a dream for us as a husband and wife in most cases because uh, things that I never think about, she thinks about. And I thought, wow, that's a good idea. And see, we submit ourselves one to another. So it's not always, you don't always have to be right. You don't always have to be the boss, even if you're the husband. And we're going to get to that in a minute. But that doesn't mean that you always have to be right. So submit yourselves to one another. Somebody else may have a better idea than you. And somebody else might have a better plan. And so submit, that doesn't mean that you always have to do what somebody else says, but be willing to have that submissive spirit and that submissive attitude to get along with one another. The, the, it, you know, uh, the road doesn't stop at your feet. And so let's be careful about submitting ourselves one to another. Now, um, and let me say this really quickly before we jump into verse number 22. Uh, although the husband is not given specific command to submit to the wife, he is to submit to his wife, listen carefully, in an honorable way. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them. It's referring to the wife. Dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. Giving honor unto the wife. And so, husbands, we are to respect and honor our wives. And one way we can do that is to have that submissive. Yes, the husband is the leader of the home. We're going we're gonna to plow that in just a second. The husband is the leader of the home. But husbands, we have to be submissive to our wives and their spirit. And their ideas, and they are very important. My wife and I, and I, I don't want to keep using personal illustrations. My wife and I, uh, we can veto each other's decision. If I'd say, hey, I think this is uh, the right thing to do, uh, then, then my wife can say, well, we just need to think about that. And at the end of the day, she's going to say, well, uh, if you think we need to do this, and that's fine. But uh, we, we, we all, uh, we're submissive to one another, you say. Uh, now, Notice the next thing. As a couple, we're to submit to one another. And let it be, as a couple, the wife is to submit to her husband. Now, you, most of you have heard this all of your lives. And I know that comes a little smirky grin on you and I as men sometimes when we hear that. Oh, yes, pastor, let her have it. And I'm hearing, we got a good church. I hear no men right now saying amen. We're, uh, we have some great husbands tonight. As a couple, the wife is to be submissive to the husband, submit themselves to the husbands. But I want you to understand this, and this, there's a wife, and basically you understand what that means, uh, is the, the husband is the leader. We'll get that in just a second, but basically the husband is the leader of the home. And I believe with all my heart our homes are made that way. And there's not this, and there should never be this spirit of... Uh, from the husband of, I am the leader. Let me say this. My pastor used to tell us this at our church when I was his assistant. He said, if you have to say that you, if you have to tell constantly your family that you're the leader of the home, you're probably not. And if you have to say constantly, I'm in charge, I'm in charge, I'm in charge, you're probably not. And because a true relationship where the husband leads, the wife submits, that, that is, it, it, it is, 
And, and the problem we have with this is because we, get, we dip so much into the world's philosophies. Because there's so many people that say, that's crazy. That's pathetic. There's so many people that look at that and say, that is from the 30s and that is, does it work for today? Well, how, how is America doing? Amen. How is our country getting along? I think we need to get, I don't know about you, but I, I just have an opinion. We need to get back to the Bible in America. Thank God for our president who held up the Bible the other day. He, he was, I think, I don't know what he was thinking, uh, but, uh, I mean, what, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a statement to hold up the Word of God in, in, in America and, and say something about our country. And I think that uh, we ought to get back to the Word of God. But this shows when a wife is submissive to her husband, that doesn't mean that she says, Oh, mighty, did I polish your shoes correctly this morning? Oh, did I put enough cheese in your scrambled eggs? Oh, that, you know, that idea is crazy. Okay? But the wife, and really, the wife is really the deal breaker here because it all depends. Can I, can I be honest? Can I give you, give you one more personal illustration here? Who said no? I'm just kidding. <laughs> my, I, I, does, I don't have to ever say, look, I'm the leader of my home. My wife allows me to lead. I've never had to say, you know, I'm in charge, you know. And, you know, I say it pickingly sometimes, you know. But the truth of the matter is, uh, she is submissive. And so when the wife is submissive, the husband feels confident that he is the leader. The problem is, is when it goes all the way back to Eve, when they switched roles. Remember, we talked about this a couple Sunday nights ago, when Satan came after Eve. You know what he was trying to get her to do? He was trying to get her to make the decision for the home. I'm going to become wise. I'm going to eat this, and then I'll give it to Adam. So Satan, really the whole corruption of the home, Satan happened when Satan switched, tried to switch the roles. Of the of the who was the leader and who was making the choices and so forth and who was following. You understand that Adam followed Eve, okay? You say, well, this is this is. I understand that, but understand the concept, perspective I'm talking about here. And so Eve made the decision before she talked to Adam about it, and that's where we have the fall of mankind and the sin. And so when God, when everything is placed in the way God would have it to be, everything is in such harmony, and the home just works so much better. And our country, of course, goes the way of the home. And the country could go so much better if we'd simply get back to the Bible instead of harping on the Word of God and saying it doesn't work, it's out of date. God knows what He's doing. He's our Creator, friend. And He knows how we think. He knows what we do. And when a wife is submissive to the husband, I want you to understand, look in verse number 22. This is very important. When the wives submit, when the wives say, Honey, I don't feel like that. You know, but but you know you 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 know you're our leader, and you need to make the decisions for our home. If you feel like, let's pray about this. We and you and that wife is to be a help to that husband, but she understands that he is the head of the home. There has, and we'll get to that in just a minute. This shows obedience to the Lord. Look in verse number twenty-two again. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands. What is the next four words? Can you say it with me tonight? As unto the Lord. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husband. As unto the Lord. So when you, as a wife, are submissive unto your husband and you allow him to lead, instead of trying to take the leadership role from him and you allow him to lead, you are understanding that you're doing that to the Lord. You're doing this for the Lord, not necessarily, yes, you're doing it for your husband, but if you truly love God, any wife that loves the Lord with all of her heart will want to please the Lord. God says, submit to your husband. So the wife says, I want to please the Lord. I please the Lord by submitting to my husband. So when you submit yourselves to your husband, you are doing that. You have to understand you're doing that first and foremost because God asked you to. And I think that's just, I think that's just incredible. And this shows, number two, this not only shows obedience to the Lord, but when a wife is submissive to her husband, it shows headship. And look in verse number 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church. And again, these verses are so, 
from the world's philosophy are just so corrupt, if you will, from their perspective, and it's just so backwards, and it's just, and, you know, women are equal to men, and absolutely, you know, absolutely. My wife is, I'll be honest with you, my wife is a whole lot smarter than I am. And some of you are like, yeah, Pastor, we already knew that. Tell us something we didn't know, okay? <laughs> my wife is so much smarter than I am. And I, I would never take an IQ test with my wife in the same room uh, because she would have a much higher IQ than I. And, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and women are so smart. And, yes, they're equal. But there has to be order. And God says that the husband is the head of the wife. And I want you to notice that this is very interesting. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Raise your hand if you believe that Christ is the head of the church. We don't, we don't have a problem with that, do we? But the world, and we don't have a problem with the whole verse, but the world has a problem, maybe not with Christ as the head of the church, which kind of makes sense, but why would the husband be the head of the wife? Well, it's the same sentence. And God says, just like Christ is the head of the church, I'm, I'm saying Christ is the head of the church. God's also saying the same sentence, that I have created the husband to be the head of the wife. And he has allowed that God created Adam before he did Eve. And I'm not demeaning women in any way, shape, or form. You know me. I, I would never do that. We wouldn't have a choir. <laughs> we wouldn't have nursery workers. We wouldn't have Sunday school teachers. And I and thank God for the ladies of our church, the godly, sweet, precious, sweet-spirited ladies of our church. But we have to be careful, uh, wife, to allow our husband to lead our home just as Jesus Christ is head of the church. That doesn't mean they are the boss and they do boss everybody around. That's not how it works. It goes back to the introductory part of that, verse number 21, that we submit ourselves one to another, but there has to be leadership. There has to be some type of leadership. Okay? That's, uh, and we can go on and on and on. Now, let her say quickly, quickly. As a couple, do we have these up here? As a couple, we are to submit to one another. As a couple, the wife is to submit to her husband. And let her see, as a couple, the husband is to love his wife. Now, head of the home, here we go. If we will love our wives as we are supposed to love our wives then our wives will probably want to submit as they are supposed to submit. But I'm afraid that in many cases, the reason the wife doesn't want to submit because the husband is not willing to love. Can I say that again? I don't know if I can or not. We'll keep on. As a couple, the husband is to love his wife. In verse number 25 through verse number 20, 29, and I want you to notice how the husband is to, be, is to spiritually love his wife and how the husband is to similarly love his wife. Notice in verse number 25, husbands... Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. The husband is to spiritually love his wife. This agape love. The way that God loves you and gave himself on the cross to die for your sins and mine so that we can have eternal life in heaven is the same love that you and I as husbands are to love our wives with. It is not to be a carnal love, a lustful love, a like you love, but it is to be a spiritual God's way of love. Spiritual love is seen in the sacrifice for Christ in the, of Christ for the church. Look in verse number 25 again. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. God says, just like Jesus gave himself for the church, and by the way, we understand that the church is not necessarily the building. We say we're going to the church, but in reality when we say we're going to church, we just mean basically we're well, going to meet other people that make up the church because you and I that are saved, born again, are the body of Christ. We are the church. It is not necessarily the building, okay? The church is the people who makes it up, God's people. And God gave himself. We understand that. And that is exactly how the husband is to love his wife this sacrificial, in a sacrificially manner. And, and, and really, we, I'll just move on from here because there's so much that we could tackle, but I believe the Holy Spirit can work in your heart if you'll be receptive to Him about how you can sacrificially love your wife. 
Spiritual love is seen in the sacrifice of Christ for the church, and spiritual love is seen in the sanctifying of the church. And I thought this was really interesting. Look in verse number 26. That he might sanctify us, talking about Christ and the church. Paul goes back and forth in this letter to the Ephesian believers, and he goes back and forth in comparison to the husband and wife and the Christ and the church and the comparisons between them. And we'll talk more about it in just a second. But he says spiritual love is in the sac- sanctifying of the church. In verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. This is Christ in the church. Christ gave himself for you and I. He died on the cross, shed his blood for your sins and mine. was buried and rose again three days later. Thank the Lord for that. And he gave himself for it. And then he says also that he can sanctify, that he can have it to himself. Apart from the world, a place, a people that are for him and him alone and for his purpose. That bring him honor and glory and to cleanse it. How? Through the the word of God, you see. And so here we have this comparison of the husband and wife. And how the wife is to treat the, the husband is to treat the wife as Jesus and Christ, Jesus Christ looks at the church, and the husband here is to view and help his wife, just like Jesus views and helps the church. I think that's I think that's very interesting, and our pattern is always Jesus Christ, of course. But the husband, this spiritual love, husbands love your wives. We understand that, but that's a spiritual love. As Christ loved the church. So it means to be not only love them, but sacrificially love them. It goes pretty deep. But then also uh, love them uh, with sacrifice. Love them as God looks at the church. God looks at the church and he sees, look at this. He sees uh, something without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. And of course, uh, Jesus loves the church and he looks at you and I. And as his blood purchased possession, and he loves you and I, and as Jesus looks down at you and I as his possession, and to help us through the word of God, you and I as husbands, men, are to love our wives and to look at them uh, as something that God has given us, and this precious thing that we have, and to help them, to lead them in the way that that, that God would have us to go. Amen? And husband, if we want to be the spiritual leader of a home, we're going to have to lead our wife in a spiritual direction. I think in many cases, the wife, the lady, and, and the uh, wife is more spiritual than the husband. And I think there's, there's a lot of problems that happen because of that. Because, the, you know, the wife has to say, well, honey, get the kids ready. It's time to go to church, Remember? And the husband's like, ah, I don't care. Ah, I'm going to go fishing today. You know, ah. and, uh, and, it, and it poses a problem. It poses a problem with the marriage about the wife. Be- and the husband then says on Monday, well, you, uh, you know, you woman, you just try to take the leadership role home. You know, preacher, preach them, you know, submitting, submitting uh, to me, you know. <laughs> and the reason is, is because the husband's not being the spiritual leader he's supposed to be. He's a leader, but he's not a spiritual leader, see. And that's very important. So notice how the husband is to be a spiritual lo- uh, uh, spiritually love his wife. And then, verse 28 and 29, and see how the husband is to similarly love his wife. So all men to love their wives as their own bodies. Fellas, do we love our bodies? Well, I'm going to get mixed reactions from that. The Bible says we do. Let me tell you a question. I love my body. I feed it three times. Well, probably a lot more than that. I feed my body. I love this thing. I'm going to take care of it. And this, that, and this thing right here starts to grumble a little bit. I'm going to give it something good, man. I'm not going to eat nothing that's nasty. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to eat hot dogs and pizza and ice cream. I'm going to take care of this body because I love this body. <laughs> We have kids tonight. I should have uh, helped out. I love broccoli and green beans. And, and uh, too late now, Pastor, I uh, understand. All right. And uh, notice how the husband, 
is to similarly love his wife as so ought man to look in verse number 28 again. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. Think about that. We, we don't hate our own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth even as the Lord the church. So just like I take care of my body because it's mine, I have to live in this body. I am to, as I cherish it, nurse it, I am to take care of my wife, just like my own body. Okay? Uh, and which leads us to this the last thoughts here tonight. As a couple, we represent Christ and the church. And I'm almost done. As a couple, we represent Christ and the church. Look in verse number 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this shall, call shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they shall, two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, as, and see that wife that she reverence her husband. So I want you to notice these quick things, and I'm done. As a couple, we represent Christ and the church. Couples represent Christ and the church in their oneness. And their oneness. We read there in verse number 30 that we are members of his body. When you and I, there's a lot of definitions that define us as a believer. We Christ is in us, but we are also in Christ. We are of his body. He is our head. He is the head. He is our leader. Okay? And we as we follow him, and we are the body of Christ. Here, verse 30. We are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Okay? We are part of Christ. Amen? And just like as we are one in Christ, with Christ, you understand that, uh, also it's found in marriage that when a man and a wife are joined together, they become one. They become one, just like we are in Christ. And when you and I get married, and that's why... And I want, I want to be careful here because, it, you know, there's a lot of folks that, a lot of couples that live together. And I, I, I want you to understand that I would never uh, criticize someone uh, that, uh, that, that lives together and uh, because perhaps, number one, they may not know better. Number two, uh, because uh, that, that is their decisions and I'm going to be respectful full of that. And you say, Pastor, what's your reaction to that? To lead them in the right direction. What good is it going to do when you see somebody that, that's not doing something biblically? Let, let's just be honest about this. When someone that is going against the Word of God, listen to me very carefully. When someone is going directly against the Word of God, is it going to help that? What is going to help them for you to jump up and down and scream and holler and say, Hey, you get right with God! Or to try to lead them and help them and say, You know, I understand where you are. And I want to help you if I can. If you'll let me, I want to help you see, show you what the Word of God says. And to lead them in the right direction. And that's what we're here for. We're not here to, to throw rocks at our neighbors. We're here to help lead people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when someone is not doing right, you don't look at them in different than you would anybody else. Our goal is to try to help bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, So they can have a victorious life. Okay, and so uh, and so, I want to be willing to help anybody, amen. Uh, that's trying to try to do right, um, and but I want you to understand that marriage, when when a husband and wife come together, that is showing a, a prime example, and that's why it's so important to not exclude marriage out of the picture because that shows a picture of Christ in the church. Okay. And so that's why marriage is, another reason marriage is so important. Couples represent Christ in the church in reverence. Look at this. Nevertheless, look, I'm done. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Couples represent Christ in the church in reverence. Do we reverence the Lord Jesus Christ? He is reverent, isn't he, as the Bible says? And we are to reverence, we are to honor and respect the Lord Jesus Christ. And just like marriage, the husband and wife, the, Jesus Christ is head of the church. The hu wife, husband is the head of the wife. And just as though that we are to show Christ's reverence as the he our head of our church, our body, and we, the wife is to reverence and respect her husband, it shows a picture of Christ and the church. I'm thankful for Jesus, aren't you? 
And God help us to have receptive hearts, not according to the philosophy of the world. That's why the Bible says in 1 John, love not the world, the things that are in the world, because it goes completely against Scripture and God's direction. But you and I know that when we follow God's direction and we forsake the world's philosophies, our homes can be such better places. And our church and our country can be such a better place. You say, Pastor, you think the Bible and the Word of God and Jesus Christ is the answer to everything, don't you? Yep. Because it is. I believe that with all my heart. I think it's very interesting. The Word of God talks about forgiving one another. Loving each other. Don't holding bitterness. How to treat others and we forsake it. I think it's very interesting. Are you exalting Christ as a wife tonight? Husband, are you exalting Christ as a, as a husband? Are you exalting Christ as a member of Temple Baptist Church? Are you exalting Christ as a Christian in your neighborhood, in your workplace? The whole picture of this latter part of Ephesians chapter 5, the marriage, the husband and wife, we'll get to the children of Ephesians chapter number 6. Kids, we'll get to you next week. The whole picture is about Jesus Christ and his love for the church. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed tonight. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you're here tonight and do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, tonight would be a great night to get saved. As the musicians come, they're going to play a verse or two, and we're going to be dismissed. We'll do our prayer request, and we'll be dismissed. But if you're here tonight and you have a need, whatever that may be, would you talk to the Lord right now? As the musicians begin to play softly, as heads bowed and eyes closed, would you search your heart tonight? Perhaps I'm, uh, the, God spoke to your heart tonight as a wife. Perhaps God spoke to your heart tonight as a husband. Say, Lord, I want to align my life with you. It's, it's, it's sometimes it goes against our flesh, doesn't it? It goes against our old sinful nature that we've chosen to, to go that path. But when we forsake our road and we travel the road that Christ has for us, oh, we find it to be so much more pleasant. It doesn't mean it's always going to be easy, but it's so much more victorious. We find so much more joy. We find so much more peace when we follow God and His Word. Oh, that's a hope for our country. That's a hope for our homes. That's a hope for our church. There's no doubt about it. Tonight, again, if you're not saved, tonight, trust Christ. Call on Him. Ask Him to come in your heart. Save you so that you can have eternal life in heaven. Father, we love you tonight, and we thank you so much for your word. And I pray that you'd help it to sink down deep into our ears and our hearts. And Father, please help us to become better people, better Christians and believers as a result of it. Father, please help no one. I know that some things that are said tonight are very uh, uh, put people on edge. I, I don't believe anyone in our church. But Father, I pray that you take it and accomplish it as that which would bring you honor and glory. And, Father, that you would help the recipients, whether they were listening tonight or whether they're watching online or whether they're here tonight, that you would help us to receive your word with eagerness and receptiveness and attentiveness and accept it and swallow it wholeheartedly and apply it to our lives. Father, not be resentful for your word just because we think it's out of date. Who are we? Who are we to say the word of God is out of date when it works so well? It's proven to that. We love you. Help us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.